Products this week, lady. Okay, to... we have a film exciting new products this week. Yeah. Absolutely, every week. Okay, starting off with this disc of gold. No, this is a uh, polyamide tape, although it's shot very beautifully. It looks like it's copper tape, but it's not. It's um, polyamide, polyamide. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Uh, actually, I call it Capton tape, and that's what a lot of people call it, Capton, which is the the Dupont trademark. And we're not allowed to call it that because it's not by Dupont. Like a lot of companies make polyamide tape. But it's um, really handy for electronics. So the nice thing about this tape is it uh, basically it's stable with a large range of temperatures. So if you're soldering something, you can use this tape nearby because it will not melt from soldering. Um, it's also thermally conductive, but it's not electrically conductive. So you can put it on top of traces without worrying and you know, protect things. You can also use it to bind. Uh, like th people who do 3D printing, they use it to sometimes bind the thermocouple to the hot end. That's a good idea. So, it, you know, because it's tape, it's tape, but it will work up to like 400 degrees C or something. Yeah. Okay. And I can also show um, on the overhead. So this is the tape. So it comes in like this um, big roll and it's extremely thin and translucent. But yeah, this is used all the time for electronic repair. And uh, we use it, we go by the, the roll here. We use tons of it. And um, for example, like when we have, uh, I'll show you an example. Um, for this, uh, I don't understand why this is not focusing. What do you want to do? It used to auto focus when I pressed the uh, button and now it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, well. I can mess around with it later. That's uh, okay. Um, so this tape here, um, here, I will can zoom in though. Okay. Well. I don't think it wants to listen to you. So yeah, it just hates me. So this tape here that we use after we solder in the OLED display, we use um, tape to cover up the pads to protect them. So you can kind of see the polyamide tape there. So that's kind of what we use um, this for. And, it, and it, it's really handy for all sorts of electronics attachment tasks. So uh, we use it in-house, but we thought some people might find it useful as well okay. for their electronics. All right. Next up. It's in filament, and it's in a lovely teal color. Yeah, it's almost like Arduino colored. It's it's actually Adabot blue. It's like a, it's like a, mm -hmm. I think it's called like baby blue, but it's like a, it's a beautiful blue color. And uh, we had to buy a bunch of reels of it, but I think it's a teal, a lovely mm -hmm. teal. It'll make some nice prints. So this is from Unusual Print and Z, and it's uh, made in the USA, and it's uh, PLA PHA, which we found works really, really well in like 90% of printers. There's like one printer that it doesn't work well with, and it's in the copy. I don't remember the name of it, but um, it, it, uh, it's a little cheaper, and so the hot end can't handle. It's a, the slightly sticky filament, but for other printers, this works very, very well, okay. and it uh, makes for very nice prints. All right. So we like this as a filament fighter. More stuff. Got this thing. Oh, this is a uh, this is kind of interesting project. This is like a Kickstarter. And it's an open source uh, logging thermometer, and you know, I'm, I'm you know, it's I, I'll totally be suckered by anyone saying, well, you know, it's totally open source, open source hardware. So it's a logging thermometer with a nice LCD. It has uh, three spots for K thermocouples. I think you can also change what kind of thermocouple. I can't remember what it's called, but um, it's got a little, uh, it's got a built-in battery. It's rechargeable, and it's a lovely um, Kickstarter that I think uh, worked out quite well. So this is. The display, so you can turn off the backlight or turn it back on. Um, I have the thermocouple. If I hold on to it, the temperature will go up. It's in uh, centigrade, but I can change it to be Fahrenheit or Kelvin. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, I guess sometimes you need Kelvin. I don't know. It's cool. Um, you can uh, record. I don't know exactly how to put it into record mode. Uh, you can do all sorts of graphing stuff. Um, it has a uh, it has four slots for thermocouples using the standard thermocouple connector. It has a uh, pullout thing, so you can I can see it very well. Uh, Built-in battery can log on the fly. Just, it's just a handy one if you ever have to yeah. log temperatures or keep track of temperatures. It has this graph. It's it's really nice and way less expensive than if you bought like you know a fancy fluke thermocouple meter, which would run you a couple hundred dollars, at least even a couple, you know, probably close to a thousand dollars for some of the really nice logging uh, th uh, thermocouple meters. 
But this one's nice. It's open source. You can reprogram it. I think it has an at mega three three two four inside of it, and the code's open source. If you want to modify this and improve it or hack on it and make it do something else, add Wi-Fi, add Bluetooth, you're free to. So okay. we're carrying this. And I think it, it, it's a lovely little instrument. Next up, Microsoft Azure IoT Starter Packs. We've got some. Yes, this is in partnership with Microsoft for Azure, which is their Internet of Things platform. Uh, this is actually kind of like the Internet of Things kits we already have, but um, we have two versions, one with uh, ESP8266. It's a little less expensive, but it still comes with a lot of parts. And then we have one that comes with uh, a Feather M0, so Cortex M0 with a Wink module. So like two different options for you. Um, the Wink one also comes with a um, OLED Feather Wing, which is kind of nice. But it's very fancy. It's all in one, very bedboard friendly, no soldering required, and works great with Microsoft Azure. So if you're interested in trying out their Internet of Things service, we're happy to provide you a pack of parts that we know yeah. works. OK. And last up, the star of the show tonight besides you is the new Feather Loras. Ooh. Ooh, not Loras. No? Radio, packet radios. Packet radios. Yeah. See, yeah. this is confusing. I thought. I'm going to have to explain why. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll edit that in post. OK. What is no, this No, I have to be thing? careful because there's two different radio. This is yeah. the Feather 32U4 RFM 69 HCW packet radio module. So this is a Feather 32U4. So it's got your Arduino compatible 32U4. It has a built-in Li poly battery charging yeah. circuit. You can program over USB. It has all the pinouts. It's compatible with all our Feather wings. Um, uses that same chip. And then instead of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, we stuck this radio on. And there's two different radios you can get and two different frequencies you can get. So there's a lot of options. But today, we're only releasing the packet radio version in 433 or 900 megahertz. You can tell the difference because this 433 has a red dot on it and the uh, the 900 has a green dot. If you check the website, that you'll just see that there's a green yeah. dot on top. So. These are packet radios. They're great for multi-point communication. Uh, they're FSK, uh, can use encryption. Um, can, you can have output power of up 13 to 20 dBm. Uh, mm -hmm. We use them about 300 meters away, 400 meters away in an urban environment, and they work quite well. Uh, they do all the, all the packet management is done for you in the chip. And it's quite nice. It basically does retransmits, acknowledgments, um, you can address your packet to a network and also to a subnode within that network, or you can do like broadcast. So basically, kind of everything that you would um, want to do with a radio, it's kind of taken care of for you, like error correction and and all that good stuff. Uh, it's not a LoRa type radio. Uh, we have a coming soon for those. They're more expensive, but we will have those as well because they're pin compatible. But these modules come from Hope RF. These are based off the uh, I think the SX1272 which is the Semtec chip that actually does the work. And then Hope just puts them on a nice little module with a crystal and all the analog parts and the little amplifier chip uh, so you can get um, full power. And I've got a demo here to basically okay. show it off. Now, I'm not going to go 350 meters away because that would be a little weird. But uh, you can just, I can show it nearby. So that's one. And this is, I just reset this, and this is another one. So this is uh, node number two, and this one is going to come up. So you can imagine like these were far apart. They're not, because uh, I have to show them off on this desk. But um, the demo I have is this one is the 900 megahertz version with a little wire antenna, and I got a little battery. Um, and I put on the OLED feather wing, and I have it listening to these three buttons, A, B, and C. And on the other side, I have basically the same setup, except it's side by side. So you can see that there's this radio module. And, uh, and then I have it on a side-by-side -side adapter with the OLED. And then if I press the A button on this node, it'll say, hey, I received button A. And if I press button B, it'll say, hey, you press button B. And if I press button C, it'll say, hey, you press button C. And then vice versa, you know, node 2 can send to node 1 and tell it, hey, button A, B, C, A, B, a, you know, you can have a party. It'll tell you your um, signal strength as well. Uh, but you can basically separate these by 300 meters and they would still work. So it's magical. And you can have a ton of radios on the same network. And um, basically, these just go much farther than your 2.4 gigahertz radios. They can also be used in low power mode. Um, 
900 megahertz is kind of nice because it's and 900 and 433 are both ISM bed, but 900 megahertz you can pretty much do whatever the heck you want on it. And um, the modules themselves are FCC certified. You know, depending on your final product, you may need more certification. Yeah, certified, yeah. But they are the ISM band, so it's not nearly as frustrating or annoying. It's not even as much as the 2.4 gigahertz band. This is, you pretty much can do whatever the heck you want to do on the 900 megahertz band, as long as you are narrow band. And there's a couple of rules, but uh, these radios are, are pretty foolproof in with that respect. Um, and what else can you do with these? Yeah, they're basically they're, they're multi-point, which is kind of nice. You can, they don't do mesh networking, although you, if you wanted to, you could create your own mesh network on top of it, there's no mesh networking built into the chip, but like if you want to do the protocol management of mesh, you can do it. Um, but basically, like if you if you need to have like two or more modules talk to each other, they're very far apart. You want them to not use a lot of power. You know, Wi-Fi uses a lot of power, and you have to maintain that link, right? You have to connect, and then you can send a lot of data back and forth. These are best for. You know, the, the modules are sleeping, they wake up every few seconds, they send out a burst of data, and then they go back to sleep, or they're listening for data. That's not like a, you can do constant data transmissions, but what they're really, really good for is, you know, stateless packet transfer. They wake up and then they're like, hey, you know, anybody who's listening, here's the data I have to transmit. Um, they get the acknowledgement and then they go back to sleep. So good for um, outside stuff where you don't necessarily have access to Bluetooth or Bluetooth Low Energy or Wi-Fi, low power stuff, because you don't have to maintain that link connectivity, um, far distances. And then, of course, if you pair this up with a Wi-Fi module, you can create like a gateway, or you could use this uh, same radio on a Raspberry Pi, and you could use a Raspberry Pi as a gateway as well. So these are, these are kind of nice little modules. And then we will have almost identical except for it has a lower type radio as yeah. well. I didn't get those done today, but they're manufactured basically ready to go. I just have to uh, take a couple more days and, and finish up the documentation. The lower radios are not going to be compatible with these, but they can go much further, like three to four times as far, but they're a little bit more expensive. So trade-offs. If you don't need more than 300 meters of distance, these are pretty great. And uh, they have a lot of, they're kind of like the nicest radios out there. I really like them, a lot of capability. And um, we use two really good libraries that are already written. I actually started writing a library and then I realized like, I'm not gonna be able to write a library better than the people who already have. So Low Power Labs, we're an excellent library. Uh, let's check them out. They do a lot of stuff with these radios as well. Um, and uh, Airspace, which I also link to. Uh, they have the Radiohead library, which covers a huge number of radios, which is not as, easy to use, I think, but a lot more powerful. So there's a lot of uh, support already for the Atmel chipset for these radios. And this is my first, this is the first radio product in Adafruit. We're so a radio company now. We're now a radio company. And I've always kind of been like, uh, like I radio RF, I'm not, I don't really understand it. I never really studied it. You know, I, I this is a little alien to me. So I'm learning a lot about radios. Like I have to learn about the like, different encoding techniques and like, can I use these to listen in on other 900 megahertz devices and like what kind of modes do I have to put them in and what bit rates and stuff. So I don't know a ton about them. I mean, I've read through the data sheet and I've, I've played around, but I'm learning, looking forward to learning more. This is kind of a new situation for me. Always be learning. Always be learning. Okay. Well, with that, test new products, Lady Ada. Yay. Good work. Test new products.